M S W Media. Thank you, HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit, for sponsoring this episode. Go to HelloFresh.com slash DailyBeans16 and use code DailyBeans16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Hello and welcome to the Daily Beans for Monday, June 26, 2023. Today, one of the architects of the fraudulent elector scheme is in talks with Jack Smith to cooperate. Meanwhile, one of the Willard War Room attendees has signed a cooperation deal with the Department of Justice. Mueller indicted oligarch Evgeny Prigozhin staged a brief coup this weekend in Russia. Rudy Giuliani has been sanctioned by Judge Beryl Howe in the Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss defamation case. Trump steers PAC donations to pay his legal fees. And the former guy was unable to secure a bond to put a down payment on what he owes E. Jean Carroll. I'm Allison Gill. And I'm Dana Goldberg. Happy Monday, Dana. And to you as well. Did you have a good weekend? I did. I had a very nice, relaxing weekend. I had a whole day off on Saturday, which was oh, nice. That is impressive. I had to follow Jennifer Holiday singing her iconic song from Dream Girls on stage in Salt Lake City at the HRC Gala this weekend. It was nuts. She was oh, incredible. You had to go up after that. Yeah, I had to follow oh. Jennifer. Hall. So my mother, my Jewish mother would be like, Jennifer Holiday open for my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing that you're amazing. Oh, it, was, it was good. It was actually good. My, my set hit hard and I raised more money than their goal. And it was a good night in Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City has a thriving LGBTQ community. I feel like everywhere I went, yep. there was either a trans or non-binary or queer person working behind the counter. And it made me so happy. That's amazing. Yeah. One time I had to follow a priest. Oh, as one does. Yeah. I was doing a women's veterans thing in Minnesota ah. and uh, they had a benediction. No, I benediction. love <laughs> It's a great brunch. It's a great brunch <laughs> dish. <laughs> Benedictions are my favorite eggs dish of all eggs time. Eggs benediction. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And no, I'm sorry. The priest had to go on after me. Oh, the, yeah. And they're like, so God loves everyone, even those with a uh, dirty sense of humor and a foul mouth. It was really like, that's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. So that was, I killed it though. I mean, it's, it's women veterans. You yeah. Know, amazing. We get each other. We understand each other. So yeah, Trump can't get a loan from a bank to pay what he owes E. Jean Carroll. <laughs> really? Deutsche Bank really won't take his call? I wonder why. Oh no, yeah. Deutsche want a loan, won't even give him this money. Ladder Capital won't. He couldn't get, a, he has to pay a bond, right? Like a down payment to show that he's going to pay her, her $5 million. Couldn't get a bond, so he had to use cash. Womp, womp. <laughs> and uh, Owen Schroyer, right? Co-host of InfoWars, sometimes host of InfoWars. Alex Jones' right-hand man. He was in Friends of Stone, that chat yeah. group that we heard about during the January 6th committee hearings. He was at the Willard War Room with Mike Flynn and Bannon and the Oath Keepers and the Proud Boys and everybody the, on the January 5th and January 6th. He has signed a cooperation agreement with the government, with Jack. Well, I don't know if it's with Jack Smith, but it's with the Department of Justice. He's he's copping to a couple of misdemeanors and they're they're dropping his felony charges in exchange for being able to have full access to his social media accounts. That's delicious. Yeah. And I, at first I was like, that seems pretty narrow. Usually if you're cooperating, you got to tell them everything. But uh, Andy and I go over all of that and maybe why they did that in the current episode of Jack that's out now. So you definitely don't want to miss that. So we have a lot to get to. So yeah, I, I do want to, I do want to clarify though. I had Saturday off, but I had to deal with a family crisis. Oh. <laughs> so, so it was kind of good that I had the day off. I got to do that. And everybody, that's why the bonus episode weekly wrap up for the beans for patrons didn't come out until yesterday. So I do apologize for the lateness on that. Even though I had the day off, I was running some, putting out some fires. Everything's fine though. Just want everybody to know. Okay. Good, good, good. All right, let's hit the hot notes. Hot notes. All right, first up from the Times, this is Foyer and Haberman. Mike Roman, a top official and former President Trump's 2020 campaign, is in discussions with the Office of Special Counsel Jack Smith that could soon lead to Mr. Roman voluntarily answering questions about 
a plan to create slates of pro-Trump electors in key swing states that were won by Biden, according to a person familiar. If Mr. Roman ends up giving the interview, known as proffer, to prosecutors working for Smith, It would be the first known instance of cooperation by someone with direct knowledge of the so-called fake elector plan. That plan has long been at the center of Mr. Smith's investigation into Trump's wide-ranging efforts to overturn the 2020 election. And this is kind of true, but also kind of not true, because we also know that the two Nevada fraudulent electors that Jack Smith brought in front of the grand jury a couple weeks ago have been given limited use immunity for their testimony. It's a little different than a full cooperation agreement, though, so it is the first that we know of a full cooperation agreement with somebody who was involved heavily in the fraudulent elector scheme. And it's also interesting, Andrew Weissman brought this up on Twitter. This is a Haberman piece. Haberman is a, a Trump access reporter. And he's saying that this could be Trump world dropping this in the news to kind of threaten Mike Roman. Oh, interesting. Yeah, to keep him from testifying. The talks with Roman, who served as Trump's director of Election Day operations, were the latest indication that Smith is actively pressing forward with his election interference investigation, even as attention has been focused on other cases in his portfolio. Uh, The recent indictment of Donald in Florida on charges of illegally keeping hold of classified documents and then obstructing the government's repeated efforts to retrieve them, which he admitted several times on stage this weekend. In the past few weeks, several witnesses with connections to the fake elector plot have appeared in front of the grand jury in Washington that's investigating the ways in which Donald and his buddies sought to reverse his defeat to President Biden. Among them, Gary Michael Brown. That's Mr. Roman's one-time deputy who was questioned in front of a grand jury this past Thursday. Roman did much of the legwork putting together the fake elector plan and finding ways to challenge Trump's losses in several key battleground states. Roman, uh, according to some emails that the New York Times reviewed, coordinated with several other lawyers and aides to Trump in seeking to assemble support to create the false slates of electors in Georgia, Arizona, Michigan, and Nevada, to name a few. Among those whom Roman worked closely with the email showed was Boris Epstein, a lawyer and political advisor on the campaign who has since served as something like Mr. Trump's in-house counsel. And Jenna Ellis, another lawyer who advised Trump, and she was uh, almost disbarred, but certainly sanctioned, had to admit she lied. And Boris Epstein recently spent two days talking to Jack Smith's prosecutors. The emails reviewed by the Times showed Roman and others discussing options to try to prevent Biden from being certified as the winner. He reported details of their activities to Rudy, Trump's former personal lawyer, who championed Trump's baseless claims of election fraud to Trump, Trump, two top Trump Republican officials from Nevada who were involved in the plan. You know what I mean. Jim DeGraffenried and Michael McDonald gave testimony to the grand jury in Washington two weeks ago on the same day Trump was arraigned in Miami and left out of this story is that they were given limited use immunity. And again, Andy and I will go over all of this on the next episode of the Jack podcast. If you're not listening, seriously, you get all your Jack news in one place. You will love it. I love this. All right. Thanks, A.G. This is from CBS News. Um, A short-lived revolt by a rebellious Russian mercenary commander ended up with his troops beating a retreat. But the extraordinary challenge to Vladimir Putin's two-decade hold on power could have long-term consequences for his rule and his war in Ukraine. As U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who told Face the Nation on Sunday morning, the current situation in Russia is an unfolding story. He went on to say, we haven't seen the last act and said, we're watching it very closely and carefully, but just step back for a second and put this in context. Okay. Now on Sunday morning, I'm going to try this. (laughs) Evgeny Prigozhin. Is that right? Close. Yeah, close. Yevgeny Prigozhin. Mm -hmm. Yevgeny, not Jenny. All right. Jenny, I'm sure is nice. Maybe it's his sister. All right. Yevgeny Prigozhin, the head of the Wagner mercenary group, was set to leave for Belarus under the deal brokered with the Kremlin. As part of the deal, Wagner troops would be pardoned and criminal charges against Prigozhin would be dropped. Now, Blinken said on Face the Nation that he couldn't get into where Prigozhin currently is located, but said it's something they are, and I quote, tracking through surveillance. Now, Wagner troops were seen Sunday leaving Rostov, a major military post they had taken over. Now, by Sunday afternoon, the troops had withdrawn from the capital and people swarmed the streets and flocked the cafes. Everything looked like it was normal. Yeah. Traffic returned to normal and roadblocks and checkpoints were removed. But Red Square remained closed to visitors. On highways leading to Moscow, crews repaired roads ripped up just hours earlier in panic. Hmm. In a television address on Saturday, Putin called for unity and accused Prigozhin of treason without mentioning him by name. Now, Putin's image as a tough leader had already been badly bruised by the Ukraine war, 
which has dragged on for 16 months and claimed huge numbers of Russian troops. They thought this was going to end quickly. Saturday's march toward Moscow by forces under the command of his one-time protege, Prigozhin, exposed further weaknesses. And that's what the analysts are saying. It also meant some of the best forces fighting for Russia in Ukraine were pulled from that battlefield. Prigozhin's own Wagner troops and Chechen ones sent to stop them. So those were all pulled. They then advanced toward Moscow largely unhindered. Now, Russian media reported that they downed several helicopters and military communications plane. The defense ministry has not commented on that. They were halted only by a deal to send Prigozhin to neighboring Belarus, which has supported Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Now, charges against him of mounting an armed rebellion will be dropped. That's according to Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov. And Prigozhin ordered his troops back to their field camps. Well, the government also said it would not prosecute Wagner fighters who took part, while those who did not join in would be offered contracts by the defense ministry. Mm -hmm. So very, very weird. Um, Very. Wagner, Prigozhin's Wagner group was just, they came in, they took the defense ministry's headquarters in Rostov, along with the FSB regional office. They just walked in and then they started on the road up to Moscow and they were in the oblast and which is the region around Moscow, kind of like Dallas, Fort Worth is around Dallas. And they were within hours and and Moscow was freaking out. They were setting up for terrorist attacks. They were destroying roads. And and then all of a sudden there was a deal and Prigozhin agreed to leave and go to Belarus and all the charges would be dry. It was, it's just really that weird. bizarre. And thank you, by the way, for the correction. I kept saying Wagner and it's Wagner. So I yeah, appreciate well, that, A.G. We say it here. All right. Wagner. Well, I want to try as much as I can, but, you know, every once in a while, it looks like an easy word and it's not. <laughs> ich gewohnt im Deutschland. I say Wagner. <laughs> so okay. And I'm Jewish, so I'm like Wagner. Okay, let's go. <laughs> all right. Next up. Also from the New York Times, facing multiple intensifying investigations, the former guy has quietly begun diverting some of the money he's raising away from his presidential campaign and into a pack that he uses to pay his legal fees. The change, which went unannounced except in the fine print of his online disclosures, raised fresh questions about how Trump is paying for his mounting legal bills, which could run into millions of dollars as he prepares for at least two criminal trials, at least, and whether his pack, Save America, is facing a financial crunch. They're also under criminal investigation, by the way. When Trump kicked off his 2024 campaign in November, for every dollar raised online, 99 cents went to his campaign and a penny went to the Save America PAC. But internet archival records show that sometime in February or March, he adjusted that split. Now his campaign share has been reduced to 90% of donations and 10% goes to Save America. The effect of that change is potentially substantial. Based on fundraising figures announced by his campaign, the fine print maneuver may have already diverted at least $1.5 million to the PAC. And the existence of the group has allowed Trump to have his small donors pay for his legal expenses rather than paying for them himself. You get that? Such a grift. It's all a grift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell your Trump supporting MAGA family members and friends they're paying for Trump's legal bills. They're probably happy about it. Keep it going. Stephen Chung, a spokesman for Trump, didn't answer detailed questions about why the Trump operation had changed how the funds he is raising are being split. Save America technically owns the list of email addresses and phone numbers of his supporters, one of the former president's most valuable assets. And the campaign is effectively paying that PAC for access to that list, he explained. Oh, we just we're increasing that because we're just we're paying now 10 times as much for an access access to that (laughs) list because we didn't, you know, Trump's campaign himself doesn't have a list. Okay. The different rules governing what political action committees and candidate campaign committees can pay for are dizzying and somewhat in dispute. But generally, a PAC cannot spend money directly on a candidate's campaign and a campaign committee cannot directly pay for things that benefit the candidate personally. For more than a year before Trump was a 2024 candidate, Save America had been paying for bills related to various investigations into the former guy and his allies. In February 2022, the PAC announced it had one hundred and twenty two million dollars in its coffers. But by the beginning of 2023, the PAC's cash on hand was down to 18 million. The rest had been spent on staff salaries and the cost of Trump's political activities, including some spending on other candidates and groups and in other ways. That included 60 million that was transferred to MAGA Inc., a super PAC that's supporting Donald, and more than 16 million went to pay legal bills. Hmm. My God, so much money, though. So much money. All right, AG, this is from Reuters. Rudy Giuliani. Da 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 da. Uh 
He was sanctioned by a U.S. judge on Friday for failing to search for and turn over records in a defamation lawsuit brought by former Georgia election workers against him for accusing them of ballot fraud. U.S. District Judge Beryl Howell ordered Giuliani, Donald Trump's ex-lawyer, I love that they keep saying that in stories, to pay attorney fees and costs associated with the plaintiff's effort to force Giuliani to search for documents. And that's according to an order in Washington, D.C.'s federal court. The exact sum has not been yet determined. A lawyer for Giuliani did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Shocking. But this is a quote. We're pleased with the court's order and look forward to our clients having their day in court. That's from Michael Gottlieb, and he's a lawyer for the election workers. That's what he said in a statement. The judge previously said Giuliani, who served as mayor of New York. I love that they just add those on like we're not sure who the fuck Giuliani right. is anymore. <laughs> Whose face melted off in front of yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Giuliani must produce nearly all records requested by the election workers by June 30th. Ooh, that's yep. what, four, five, four days from now? Yeah, I don't see this happening. Howell found that Giuliani arbitrarily limited his search for a database that contained messages and documents in his possession prior to April of 2021, when federal authorities seized his electronic devices and conducted an imprecise manual search of messages from after April of 2021. Lawyers for the plaintiffs, former Georgia election workers, who, Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, who are phenomenal women, asked Howell to sanction Giuliani in April, accusing Giuliani of failing to fulfill basic obligations to turn over records sought as part of the lawsuit and refusing to detail his efforts to preserve and collect documents. Giuliani's lawyers maintained that his searches were adequate and argued that it would cost more than $320,000 for him to access the database containing messages from before the seizure of his devices. That's too bad. Freeman and Moss sued Giuliani, as they should have, and the right-wing news organization One America News in 2021 over statements and broadcasts tying Moss and Freeman to a false conspiracy about vote rigging in 2020 U.S. presidential election in Georgia. Giuliani has previously denied those claims. One American News agreed to settle, by the way, the lawsuit last year for an undisclosed sum. The settlement agreement has not been made public. Yep. All right. Well, yeah. And, and Rudy was like, I can't afford it. And Judge Beryl Howe's like, cool, show me all of your expenses then. Yeah. We'd love to know that you're telling the truth for once in your fucking Prove it. life. Prove that you're broke. And she called his bluff. And he, I, he, I guess he didn't. Something was filed under seal. I don't know what. But then she sanctioned him. So womp womp. Love it. And he, he could be disbarred any day now, by the way, or have his law license permanently suspended. Something is happening in New York as we also wait to see what happens with Eastman's law license. That hearing is happening in California this week. It's continuing. And then uh, Jeffrey Clark, his, his disbarment hearings are going to go forward, too. So <laughs> my goodness. Making attorneys get attorneys. Making attorneys not attorneys. I think is, <laughs> is probably better. <laughs> All right, everybody, <laughs> stick around. We'll be right back with the good news. After these messages, we'll be right back. Hey, everybody, it's AG. Let me take a moment to tell you about something that's seriously simplified my life. It's called HelloFresh. Their wonderful meal kits have made my life more convenient, delicious, and have improved my relationship with food. Stuck in a recipe rut? Take a bite out of something new with 40 recipes to choose from weekly. Go to HelloFresh.com slash DailyBeans16 and use code DailyBeans16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh is more convenient than shopping at a grocery store. It costs about 25% less than ordering takeout, so they'll save you time and money. I love that. Plus, HelloFresh can help you achieve your wellness goals with calorie smart and protein smart options for both lunch and dinner. They've even added several new tantalizing vegan recipes. Everything I've ever had from HelloFresh is just absolutely delicious. Hands down, so, so good. And my latest favorite is their Parmesan chicken strips. Mm, I've never tasted anything so delightful. Baked to a golden brown perfection, perfectly paired with green beans and potato wedges, this meal would delight anyone in your household. HelloFresh is the secret ingredient to your culinary success. With their clear-cut instructions and high-quality ingredients, you'll find it surprisingly easy to unleash your inner chef for every meal. Go to HelloFresh.com slash DailyBeans16 and use code DailyBeans16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Everybody, welcome back. It's time for the good news. Who likes good news, everyone? Then good news, everyone. Hey, 
near. Good news, good news. And if you have any good news or a correction or some confessions, or uh, if you want to give a shout out to somebody you love or play shit kids say or shit you say or shit your parents say, or a shout out to a small business in your area or your small business, if you want to send pod pet tax photos, you can do that. And if you don't have a pod pet that you can send pod pet tax photos with, you can send an adoptable pet in your area. Whatever you want to send us. Anything you want at all, send it to us at dailybeanspod.com and click on contact. All right. First up from Owen, pronouns they and them. Dear Legumets, love it. On the heels of the favorable ruling in the ACLU trans care for minors case in Arkansas this week. More good news for queer, trans and non-binary people. I'd like to share my good news as a shout out to the Colorado Name Change Project. Colorado is a safe haven for trans people. I know firsthand how onerous and expensive the name change process can be. The Colorado Name Change Project didn't exist yet when I went through my legal name change in 2015. I had to publish the change in a local newspaper, and even then they misspelled my name. It felt so degrading and lonely. But now, the Colorado Name Change Project provides free resources to trans and gender nonconforming people to secure legal name changes. So far, we've provided free education to over 25,000 people through our free online workshops and website. In 2022, we helped fund 60 people with micro grants. So far in 2023, we've helped 13 folks with micro grant funding. And a new law in place explicitly exempts trans people from having to do the publication step that I had to do years ago. CNCP is free and 100% donations and grants based. We're currently in the grant application stage. We (laughs) were fully volunteer run. Many staff are LGB and TNB. And every dollar the organization brings in goes towards micro grants, directly funding trans people's name change expenses, continued free monthly workshops, and maintenance of our comprehensive website. All staff are volunteers, and we strive to be very responsive to people's questions. Check us out at namechangeproject.org. A $21 donation makes one of our monthly workshops possible. The name change process costs an average of about $265 per person. And funding through microgrants can be the thing that removes the final barrier for someone to live their true identity. If you decide to donate, let us know where you heard of us and type beans in the comments. Happy Pride. Here's a shout out to trans and queer joy with love from Colorado. That's namechangeproject.org. P.S. Pod Pet Tax is the executive director's kitty. I thought his name was executive director. <laughs> I think it should be. My kitty's name is the senator. So I figured, <laughs> why not? That's really awesome. Look at the sleeping baby. Oh, and this is fantastic. I, I just have to say, like, I know that there's a massive contingent of Beans listeners that are part of the community, but it is so nice to hear these stories. And I just want to add on to not just the Arkansas, but Florida lost and DeSantis particularly that, you know, a judge temporarily blocked the um, order to not give medical care to trans youth that's temporarily on hold, which is wonderful. This this is the thing, and I've said this before, these scare the community and no one should have to hear about their humanity or have to experience their humanity being up for debate. But as hard as it is during these times, try and take a breath and definitely stay with us. And I mean that literally. A lot of these laws are unconstitutional and thank God the courts, some of the courts are doing what they need to do, but it doesn't mean it hurts Mm -hmm. any less when you hear it. Just know that you are being fought for and we're standing next to you. Okay. So just, Mm -hmm. just, just know that. And thank you, Owen, for writing in about that. And Colorado, right on. Love it. Oh, and all the drag bans are being overturned by the courts. Yes, they are. Absolutely against the First Amendment to 100% dictate what somebody can wear. You know what I was thinking about? And this is totally random in the middle of our good news. How would they possibly do that without banning RuPaul's Drag Race from television? Do, do you know what I mean? If, if you can't have drag shows in front of youth, ha- they'd have to literally ban RuPaul's Drag Race from every channel in the, in the nation. Otherwise, kids are going to just be wandering upon. It's just ridiculous. I can't. It's just don't even answer that. I was thinking about it the other day. And this is the wormhole I go down. They'd pull right. it in that state. They'd pull it in that state. Yeah. And I don't know how to do, we would even do that. Yeah, exactly. Mm-mm. Anyway, it's insanity. But what's not insane is the submission from Stacy Lynn, pronoun nice she and her. segue. We had to get a segue in somewhere because we didn't yeah. have one in the hot notes. <laughs> I didn't do any segues today. <laughs> I was like, ah, da, 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 da. now it's hot notes. Ah, <laughs> da, 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 da. 
Good news is next. <laughs> oh my God, I love you. All right, Stacey Lynn <laughs> says, my daughter works for Planned Parenthood. Fuck yeah, Stacey Lynn's daughter. And she takes her name tag off before leaving the building because the crazy people only think fetus lives matter, not hers. I'm proud of the work she does, even though I worry. I am also proud of the work, but I can understand Mama Bear. Now, one way I fight the evil is through the crisis pregnancy centers. I'm 56 and beyond my childbearing years, but I don't let that stop me from making appointments. Oh, this is brilliant. Oh, wow. Every appointment I make is one they can't use to coerce someone looking for help. All the time they spend talking to me is the time they can't use on someone else. Since 2016, I've logged 87 appointments and at least 73 hours on the phone. It's a tiny thing, but so are mosquitoes, and they're effective at making people go away. <laughs> Pet Tax is a community cat that hangs out here. I call him Cat because he doesn't care what I call him. He just wants love. Just for joy, here's a picture of my backyard farm and a cucumber vibe because they are cool. What a great idea. Just flood those crisis centers. Those are the fake you know, family planning clinics that are Christian and you go in and just, yeah. So she's booked 87 appointments and 73 hours on the phone. Wow. That's so cool. It is brilliant. And honestly, I could do the same. I look like I could probably still bear children just because of my age, but I went through, I'm going through menopause early. I could take up some of those appointments. Yeah, me too. That's so good. Good job. Oh, that's a cool picture of that plant with the little spiral. It is beautiful. Look at mother nature. I mean, look at mother nature. That's art. The colors, the geometric shape. I mean, it's beautiful. The golden spiral. I'm not even high, you guys. And I'm just really <laughs> enjoying all of these submissions. I am not high. And look oh at that. Oh, my God. Look at what, that. What is money? Okay. <laughs> Next up from Bad Nana. No pronouns. Nana to 10. My three-year-old grandson was in the car with me when we passed a guy at a four-way stop who was flying an F. Biden flag and a Trump 2024 flag on an outbuilding about 15 feet from the road with cameras. I always give it the finger as I drive by. Grandson says, Nanny, that's bad. I responded with, it is, but the guy is an asshole. He responds with, a fucking asshole. <laughs> and I say, that's right, buddy. <laughs> he clearly heard the verbiage at home. Hashtag bad Nana. Here's my grandson with his doodle, Louie. Named after my dad. Look at this baby. Oh, my oh. goodness. He's adorbs. That puppy is, too. Thank you for that submission. Excellent. 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 Oh, my God. Really cute picture. All right. This is from Paul. Pronouns he and him. Shout out to my brother who made the stolen document shower curtain, which can be used legally in any bathroom with a door lock. <laughs> nice. I think there might be a photo missing, but or it's somewhere else, but uh, we've got Pet Tax is my friend's beautiful cat, Badu, who I watched for the last couple of days. I'll send an update if there's ever any DNA testing. Only started listening a month ago, but Daily Beans has quickly become one of my favorite podcasts. Thank you. And Paul, welcome to the fam. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. Welcome to the Leguminati, my friend. Oh, there is the shower curtain. There it is. I see it. That's so funny. I wonder if you can get that anywhere. Uh, hey, by the way, Paul, if, if we can order that anywhere, if he's selling it on Zazzle or something, send us a link. All right. Next up from Tadric, pronouns he, him, she, her, they, them. My wonderful champions. Can I say as an intersex human how much I love you both for your gorgeous de-emphasis on chromosomes? I was born with outwardly male genitalia. Yay. Let the privilege begin. And female reproductive system, including endocrinology that wreaked havoc on my normal sexual development as a male. No one ever told me what was going on, ever. I remember as a child hearing my mother and the doctor whispering. There was such a weird shame curtain around me. My parents pretended that I was fine. Even my physicians as an adult were all about penis schminus. Let's talk about your acne. <laughs> I was sexually assaulted at a party years ago. People who had been friends tore mm. my clothes and underwear off. Mm. The only thing I remember hearing is he doesn't have a dick. I figured shit out. Finally, with the help of an amazing therapist and carved out a life that was completely not contingent on my outward sexual presentation. U.S. Christo fascist, I love that term, by the way, dimwits who are literally targeting people whose bodies don't conform to XX or XY phenotypes have brought back all my worst and unproductive anxieties. I thought I was really done with worrying about what the fuck is in my underwear. You lovely humans remind me every day that it's my wit and charm and humility. And cute. <laughs> And love for my fellow travelers. 
that makes me a human being. Endocrinology is a very private matter. As the amazing Jane Fonda once wrote on a protest sign, George Bush, stay out of mine. Love my beans every day. Insight, kindness, and two voices like butter. Thanks for being you. Seriously. Wow. Audrey, thank you for this really beautiful and vulnerable submission. I was at a coffee shop um, about a month ago, and there was an intersex human there with their dog, and we started talking. And just a fascinating human being from Britain. And we were just talking about how overseas it's it's not looked at it the same way it is in the United States, and there's more of a community. But we were also talking about how science and all of the, uh, what am I trying to think, um, research on intersex humans, your IQ on average in intersex humans is high, like off the charts high. And I would just be interested if you have that same experience, Todrick. But what you went through, I'm so sorry that happened for you to be able to find your joy and peace in the body that you have in such a beautiful way. Thank you for sharing that with our listeners. I think this is something not a lot of people are aware of. And I think that there's a there's a bigger population out there than most people even know. So thank you so much for your vulnerability and the submission. It's beautiful. Yeah. And because of your submission, there are now people who feel less alone. Absolutely. And thank when you. you when you feel less alone, you can strip away the gaslighting and it really helps with the anxiety. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. If you have anything you want to send into us, anything at all, please send it into us at dailybeanspod.com and click on contact Dana. Yeah. I'm just going to give another shout out to my show in Rochester. It's at the end of July and tickets are sailing, sailing. They are sailing people. They <laughs> sailing. are sailing. Then in and Okay. Sorry. Yacht rock all weekend. <laughs> um, and, and, and it's a small room. It's an intimate room. It only holds a hundred people. It's at Carlson comedy. It's a great club in Rochester. And I know some people have already purchased tickets. I can't wait to see the beans listeners and, and meet you all. But if you haven't, you can go on my website, Dana Goldberg.com and just go to appearances. It's the second one down. Oh no, actually it might be the first one since I just performed in Salt Lake. And I would love to see you there. So get some tickets. They're super reasonably priced. And I would just love to have family in the audience. And when I say family, I don't just mean the LGBTQ community. I mean, it's my beans family. Mm. I means you. So hope to see you there. Awesome. It's going to be a great show. Yeah. And, and seriously, get your tickets. It's a small theater. You're going to want to get them now. Now. If you can. Now. All right, everybody, we will be back in your ears tomorrow with the news. Who knows what Monday holds uh, for the news? So Tuesday should be interesting. Until then, please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Take care of the planet. Wait, I should do a better segue. Hold on. Who knows what's going to be in the news on Monday? And speaking of days of the week, you know, some days of the week you can visit your family and when you visit them, you can bring them to vote. So until next time, please take care of yourselves, take care of each other, take care of the planet, take care of your mental health, vote blue over Q. And take that family with you. <laughs> I've been AG. <laughs> and I've been DG. And them's the beans. It was shitty on purpose. The Daily Beans is written and executive produced by Allison Gill with additional research and reporting by Dana Goldberg. Sound design and editing is by Desiree McFarlane with art and web design by Joel Reeder with Moxie Design Studios. Music for The Daily Beans is written and performed by They Might Be Giants, and the show is a proud member of the MSW Media Network, a collection of creator-owned podcasts dedicated to news, politics, and justice. For more information, please visit mswmedia.com. MSW Media. Hey, it's Liz and Moji, host of the Feminist Buzzkills podcast, and we have a special episode you don't want to miss. June 24th marks one year after the end of Roe, and we're looking back with an abortion provider and an activist who've been navigating the fallout. Amy Hegstra Miller, founder and CEO of Whole Women's Health, explains the realities of scrambling to close clinics while opening in safe states and shares the emotional strain that takes on patients and staff. Executive Director of Amplified Georgia Collaborative, Allison Kaufman, lays out the importance of coalition building to restore and expand access to abortion. Plus, comedian and dope queen Phoebe Robinson rounds it out with some radical self-care tips and why she crowned Pedro Pascal this year's King of Peen. This special episode drops June 23rd wherever you get your podcasts. Shit's not awesome, but we got facts, actions, and jokes. The Feminist Buzzkills Pod. When BS is popping, we pop off. Hi, I'm Harry Littman, host of Talking Feds. 
a roundtable that brings together prominent figures from government law and journalism for a dynamic discussion of the most important topics of the day. Each Monday, I'm joined by a slate of Fed's favorites and new voices to break down the headlines and give the insider's view of what's going on in Washington and beyond. Plus sidebars explaining important legal concepts read by your favorite celebrities. Find Talking Feds wherever you get your podcasts.